Thank you, Jonathan. That was beautiful. Good morning on this wonderful Easter Sunday. It is great to see all of you here and have all of you online with us as well. It is a glorious time to celebrate the resurrection of our Christ. So as we start this morning, we do want to remember a couple of prayer requests. We still want to continue to pray for Mr. Bobby Evans as his recovery is now at home, but he is still recovering. So we still want to remember him and his family in prayers. We also want to continue to pray for Ms. LaRue King as she deals with health concerns as well. But those are the only two prayer requests we have on our list, so we want to send up a great praise for the ones who have come off our list and who have been healed. So we want to praise God for those as well. Also, giving. We have four different ways that you can give this morning. One, you can still do the online giving. You can now give in person here at the front. You can mail it into the church or even drop it off at the church. So we are very blessed to be here this morning, blessed to be able to celebrate the resurrection of our Christ. So let's pray. Creator God, thank you so much for the gift you've given us this morning. Thank you for your son and for giving us his life and his blood so that we can be with you forever. Lord, help us to remember it and cherish it and never take it for granted. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Our Easter service is slightly different this morning. Um, it was originally planned before we became in person, so we had to make some adjustments and tweaks. But it is called a walk with Jesus. What you'll experience this morning is how Jesus walked through that holy week. We'll start with Palm Sunday, and we'll move through the week um, from Palm Sunday to the Last Supper, to the Garden, to the Crucifixion, and finally to the Resurrection. We'll experience everything or some degree of what Christ experienced. We'll walk with him. That's our, um, our path this morning that we're taking. In the bags that you were given, did everyone first receive a bag that's here this morning? If you didn't, raise your hand. I have a volunteer who's going to go help deliver bags. There should be enough for everybody that's sitting with you. Um, Chris, if you want to come get one with red. I know I saw y'all walk in. I think there's one that's needed back there. I think it's a white one. All right. I will ask, now that everybody seems to have a bag, if you will go ahead and pull out the one that is Palm Sunday. It has the card in it called Palm Sunday. In this bag, you will find a palm leaf and some crayons. During the video that you're about to watch that was filmed by the children's team and the children, um, you will have an opportunity, um, you'll learn what to do with those, and you can follow along, and when the video prompts you, please participate. So, Welcome to the city gates of Jerusalem. This is where everyone comes into the city. And today we're expecting a very special guest, a king. Jesus entered Jerusalem in a sort of parade. People were so excited he was coming, they'd heard about the amazing miracles that Jesus had done and how he showed love to everyone. They wanted to follow Jesus. People stood on both sides of the road, shouting and cheering for him. The people thought Jesus was coming to be their king here on earth. They thought he'd defeat the Romans who ruled over them, and then they'd be free to rule themselves. They were so excited. They laid palm branches on the road in front of Jesus as he passed by as a way of honoring him. Some even threw down their coats, and all the people shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna, which means save us. Shout that cheer with me. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. If you will take your your Palm Sunday card out and let's take a look at the top paragraph. 
It says, you're now at the Jerusalem city gates. Everyone's excited for Jesus' arrival. Have each person take a palm leaf, decorate it, and write a praise cheer. Then we'll sit with your family along the pathway. Michelle, pull this out and write a cheer. things to ponder. What would be exciting about Jesus coming to town? When do you get most excited about Jesus? And what do you do to praise Jesus? The people praised Jesus as he entered town because they thought he was going to be their new earthly king. But Jesus was so much bigger than that. He's our heavenly king. We follow Jesus and praise him for all the wonderful things he's done. So if you did not get the opportunity during the video, please take a moment to write a praise cheer on your palm leaf. Then when you're done, I want us to have that childlike faith and childlike heart um, that we don't always have, but we always need. And I want you to take your palm leaf, and I want you to raise it in the air, and I want you to yell, Hosanna. Can y'all do that with me this morning and be excited about it? One, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. That's what Jesus entered the city with that day. And I'm going to read the scripture for that. This is coming from the book of Matthew 21, 8 through 9. Most of the crowd spread their garments on the road ahead of him, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Jesus was in the center of the procession, and the people all around him were shouting, Praise God for the Son of David. Blessing on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God in the highest heaven. Now our next station that you're going to walk is our Last Supper. So at this moment, if you will, go ahead and pull out your Last Supper car, uh, bag. In this bag, you'll find your card, you'll find a wipe, and you'll find a piece of bread. Please have each of those ready and participate as the video goes. Now, before we start our video, I do want to read the scripture for this passage. And this, again, is coming from Matthew, book tw uh, chapter 26, 20 through 30. When it was the evening, Jesus sat down at the table with the twelve. While they were eating, he said, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me. Greatly distressed, each one asked in turn, am I the one, Lord? He replied, one of you who has eaten from this bowl with me will betray me. For the Son of Man must die, as the scriptures declared long ago. But how terrible it will be for the one who betrays him. It would be far better for that man if he had never been born. Judas, the one who had betrayed him, also asked, Rabbi, am I the one? And Jesus told him, you have said it. As they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the, di to the disciples, saying, Take this and eat it, for this is my body. And he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. He gave it to them and said, Each of you drink from it, for this is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It was poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. Mark my words. I will not drink wine again until the day I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Then they sang a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. Welcome to the party. After Jesus entered Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, he asked his closest friends to prepare for another kind of celebration, a very important supper. As you can see, the party has already begun. Please take a seat and take a piece of bread. 
follow on the paper. Please take the bread, take a deep breath, smell the bread, taste the bread. Look at Jesus with his friends at the table. Listen to the conversation. As you listen, consider the friends' faces. What do they think? How do they feel? Which of the people at the table do most of you feel? During the dinner, Jesus warned his friends that someone close to him would be turning him into the people who wanted to harm him. His friends you must have wondered what would happen to Jesus, but Jesus had something else to talk about. He wanted to show how important it was to follow him by serving others. Jesus set an example to serve others by washing his friends' feet. Before we move on, let's watch serve each other. You at home, take a moment to wash, you wash someone with feet of your loved ones. If you're by yourself, just wash your hand. <laughs> friends were worried about what was going to happen to him, but Jesus wanted all of his followers to focus on how important it was to follow him and serve others. We can follow Jesus by serving others. Think a minute about communion and what it means when you taste the bread and you drink the wine. What does that represent? It represents God's body and his blood that was given for us. So just close your eyes for just a second and think about the meaning and the gift that was given through that. Now, this next station, the only thing you need is your station three card and it just should be in your bag. This is the Garden of Gethsemane. This is where Jesus went to pray. Our scripture for this comes from Mark 14, verses 32 through 52. They went to the olive grove called Gethsemane, and Jesus said, sit here while I go and pray. He took Peter, James, and John with him, and he became deeply troubled and distressed. He told them, My soul is crushed with a grief uh, to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. He went on a little further and fell to the ground. He prayed that if it were possible that the awful hour awaiting him might pass him by. Abba, Father, he cried out, everything is possible for you. Please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Then he returned and found the disciples asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Couldn't you watch with me even one hour? Keep watch and pray so that you will not give in to temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Then Jesus left them again and prayed the same prayer as before. When he returned to them again, he found them sleeping, for they couldn't keep their eyes open, and they didn't know what to say. When he returned to them the third time, he said, go ahead and sleep. Have your rest. But no, the time has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Up, let's be going. Look, my betrayer is here. And immediately, even as Jesus said this, Judas, one of the twelve disciples, arrived with a crowd of men armed with swords and clubs. They had been sent by the leading priest, the teachers of religious law, and the elders. The traitor, Judas, had given them a prearranged signal. You will know which one to arrest when I greet him with a kiss. Then you can take him away under guard. As soon as they arrived, Judas walked up to Jesus. Rabbi, he exclaimed, and gave him a kiss. Then the others grabbed Jesus and arrested him. But one of the men with Jesus pulled out his sword and struck the high priest's slave, slashing off his ear. Jesus asked them, Am I some dangerous revolutionary that you come with swords and clubs to arrest me? Why didn't you arrest me in the temple? I was there among you teaching every day. But these things are happening to fulfill what scriptures say about me.
Welcome to the Garden of Gethsemane. After dinner with his friends, Jesus wanted to pray. So he took a few of his friends here. He asked them to watch while he went further into the garden to pray. Maybe because it was late at night or because they had just eaten a big meal. But Jesus' friends didn't watch like he asked them to. Instead, they fell asleep. When Jesus came back, he woke them, reminded them to keep watch, and went back into the garden to pray. And do you know what Jesus' friends did? They fell right back to sleep. This happened three times. Then suddenly, the friends heard noises in the garden. The noise was getting louder, sounding like marching boots. Quickly they hid behind a rock and listened. The soldiers arrested Jesus. This is why Jesus wanted his friends to stay awake. He wanted them to pray to God. When Jesus faced a, dif a difficult situation, he prayed to God. We can follow Jesus during difficult times, too. We can pray to God and ask for help. We can give him our worries. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you that we can talk to you about hard times we are facing. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you um, guys will get out your um, Gethsemane card from home. And um, on the back side, um, it reads, The soldiers have arrested Jesus and left the Garden of Gethsemane, where Jesus had been praying to God about the difficult situation he was facing. What's a difficult situation you're facing? I'll give you a moment to think about or talk about this at home. So when Jesus faced a difficult time, he prayed to God. Take a moment, just as Jesus did, to pray to God about your tough situation. Afterwards, sit with your family and talk about how God can help us when we face hard times. I want you to take a moment Welcome now. Welcome to Station 4. I want you to take a moment now and think about that hard time that she asked you to to pray about and I want you to spend time in the next couple of minutes and pray um, asking God's wisdom guidance and whatever is needed for you Please, if you continue your prayer at home, prayer is so very important. It's our conversation with God. It's our, our way of letting God know how we are and how we're feeling, and especially with what we're struggling with. So continue that prayer at home, and I also continue to talk to your family members at home, your children, your parents, cousins, brothers, sisters, whoever it may be. If you feel the need to talk, whether they you feel they need it or you need it, please reach out and talk. Our next station is our Good Friday station. It is our crucifixion station. So please take out the crucifixion bag. I'm going to explain this bag a little bit before we start. In the bag, you'll find your card. You'll also find a little cup of lemon juice. Go ahead and, if you will, take the cup out. You'll also find a little red tablet in the bottom of the bag. It is a little sticky, but please go ahead and take that out and just kind of set it with your lemon juice.
in this next video, you're going to hear about Jesus' crucifixion. You're going to be prompted. It'll, she'll say, taste your lemon. She means your lemon juice. We were actually called for lemons, but we couldn't really slice up all the lemons and make them work today, so you have lemon juice. Um, and she'll also give you a chance to take a sip of that and to tell you when to use the tablet as well, okay? Um, our scripture for this comes from Matthew. <coughs> Matthew 27, 27 through 54. Some of the governor's soldiers took Jesus into their headquarters and called out the entire regiment. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. They wove thorn branches into a crown and put it on his head, and they placed a reed stick in his hand as a scepter. Then they knelt before him in mockery, taunted, Hail, king of the Jews! And they spit on him and grabbed the stick and struck him on the head with it. When they were finally tired of mocking him, they took off the robe, put his clothes on him again, and they led him away to be crucified. Along the way, they came across a man named Simon, who was from Syrian. And the soldiers forced him to carry Jesus' cross. And they went out to a place called Golgotha, which means place of skulls. The soldiers gave Jesus wine mixed with bitter gall, but when he, tasted it, he had tasted it, he refused to drink it. After they had nailed him to the cross, the soldiers gambled for his clothes by throwing dice. Then they sat around and kept guard as he hung there. A sign was fastened above Jesus' head announcing the charge against him. And it read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. The people passing by shouted abuse, shock, shaking their heads in mockery. Look at you now, they yelled at him. You said you were going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Well, then if you're the son of God, save yourself and come down from the cross. The leading priest, the teachers of religious law, and the elders also mocked Jesus. He saved others, they scoffed, but he can't save himself. So he is the king of Israel, is he? Let him come down from the cross right now, and we will believe him. He trusted God, so let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. Even the revolutionaries who were crucified with him, with him ridiculed him in the same way. At noon, darkness fell across the whole land until 3 o'clock. At about 3 o'clock, Jesus called out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Some of the bystanders misunderstood and thought he was calling for the prophet Elijah. One of them ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, holding it up to him on a reed stick so he could drink. But the rest said, wait, let's see whether Elijah comes to save him. Then Jesus shouted out again, and he released his spirit. At that moment, the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook. The rocks cried out. Sorry, I lost my place. <laughs> the earth shook, rocks split apart, and the tombs opened. The bodies of many godly men and women who had died were raised from the dead. They left the cemetery after Jesus' resurrection, went into the holy city of Jerusalem, and appeared to many people. The Roman officer and the other soldiers at the crucifixion were terrified by the earthquake and all that had happened. They said this man truly was the Son of God. Welcome to Station 4, Good Friday. At this point in time, Jesus has been arrested and is being tried. The angry crowd wants him to be punished. Welcome to Good Friday. So the Jewish leaders did not like Jesus. They were jealous of Jesus. They thought he was going to take all their power away. And they didn't like that. They needed to do something. So they wanted to get rid of him. They were going to have... The people hate him, and in order to do that, they had to tell lies about Jesus, and they had to get the people to not like Jesus. So that's where we are at this point in time. 
We're going to find out what's happened after Jesus has been arrested and the angry crowd wants him punished. After Jesus was arrested, the crowd was yelling and screaming. They all wanted Jesus to be punished. He hadn't done anything, nothing, but they wanted him to be punished. They wanted him to die on the cross. It was a sad, sour day. I want each of you as a family to take your Good Friday card and on the top half, you have a lemon and a half a tablet. If you will follow the instructions on the card and take a lemon and a half a tablet, And you'll take the lemon in your mouth and let it sit for a little bit. Use a small one. <clears throat> and then put the tablet in your mouth. Let it dissolve, don't chew it. As you let the tablet dissolve, I want to talk about a few things that happened before Jesus died. The first thing was they put a crown on his head. But it wasn't a king's crown, no. It was a crown of thorns, long, sharp thorns that just dug into his head and made him bleed. Just take your fingers, your nails, and dig them in your head. There's no way we can put enough pain to show how it made him bleed and all the pain that he was feeling, but it gives you a little bit of feeling about what he felt with the crown on his head. They took Jesus to a hill. The name of the hill was the Skull. That's a creepy name, isn't it? And on the hill, they took nails and they nailed him to a wooden cross, much like this one. They nailed his hands and his feet to the cross. So just imagine you hear the crowd yelling and screaming and you hear the sound of bam, bam, nails where Jesus is hands and feet are being nailed to the cross. Jesus was being punished and he had not done one thing wrong. Jesus hung on the cross for hours and hours in terrible pain and humiliation. And again, he had done nothing wrong. The crowd just wanted him to die. Jesus hung on the cross for hours and hours with terrible pain and humiliation. Take your arms and just hold them out. And imagine hanging there with your nails, hands nailed to the cross. This was a terrible way to die. And this is what they did to criminals. But Jesus had done nothing wrong. And he was dying as a criminal dies. Later that day, Jesus died. You can put your hands down now. The Bible explains that when we disobey God, it's called sin. And the price of sin is death. We all sin. All humankind sins. We've sinned. Everyone has sinned. But we don't have to pay that price because Jesus paid that price for us. He died his death on the cross, paying his price for our sins. Think about that for a little while as the rest of the tablet dissolves in your mouth. So Jesus died so you and I would not have to die for our sins, but that we could live in the glory of heaven forever with God. So now take your card and look at the bottom half of the card and just discuss with your family a little bit about what Jesus went through to die for our sins. So the lemon was something that was very sour, even unpleasant to the taste. And that's what it was like with Jesus' death. It was very sour and sad. But pretty soon we're going to learn that Jesus' death became much sweeter, just like the little tablet that you put in your mouth. And that's what we're going to learn at our next station. Thank you. What you obviously drank was lemon juice, but the tablet you put in your mouth was called a taste-twisting tablet. And that is very hard for me to say. I usually can't say it, so I'm really kind of glad I did this time. But it's supposed to take that sour taste out of your mouth and give you a more sweeter taste. And that's kind of the experience of the crucifixion. It's a very bittersweet moment because here's the death of our Savior. But the sweetness comes in just the next station with the resurrection. The scripture I'm reading this morning for that.
coming from John chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and found that the tomb had been rolled away from the entrance. She ran and found Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved. She said, they have taken the Lord's body out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. Peter and the other disciples started out for the tomb. They were both running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He stooped and looked in and saw the linen, ra linen wrappings lying there, but he didn't go in. Then Simon Peter arrived and went inside. He also noticed the linen wrappings lying there, while the cloth that had covered Jesus' head was folded up and lying apart from the other wrappings. Then the disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For until then, they still hadn't understood the scriptures they sa that said Jesus must rise from the dead. Then they went home. Mary Magdalene was standing outside the tomb crying, and as she wept, she stooped and looked in. She saw two white-robed angels, one sitting at the head and the other at the foot of the place where the body of Jesus had been lying. Dear woman, why are you crying? They, the angels asked her. Because they have taken away my Lord, she replied, and I don't know where they have put him. She turned to leave and saw someone standing there. It was Jesus, but she didn't recognize him. Dear woman, why are you crying, Jesus asked her. Who are you looking for? She thought he was the gardener. Sir, she said, if you have taken him away, tell me where you have put him and I will go and get him. Mary, Jesus said. She turned to him and cried out, Rabbi, which is Hebrew for teacher. Don't cling to me, Jesus said, for I haven't yet ascended to my father. But go find my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene found the disciples and told them, I have seen the Lord. Then she gave them his message. At this time, I am going to ask you to go ahead and pull out that last plastic bag for station five. Chris, I'm going to ask your assistance if you'll come down and sit on the front pew for me. During what you're about, the video you're about to watch, think about the resurrection. Think about what it means for each of us. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Mary. And I came to the tomb on this Easter morning to visit Jesus' grave. But when I got here, the stone had been rolled away and the tomb was empty. I ran immediately to go get Jesus' friends, his disciples, to tell them that someone has stolen Jesus' body. But now I want you to take a minute. I want you to take out the cards that you were given, and I want you to read the top half. I want you to imagine what it was like to look inside the tomb. So y'all look inside the tomb, the emptiness, there's nobody there. Imagine what that empty tomb and stone felt like, the roughness of it. When the disciples came and they saw that it was empty, they were devastated. They didn't know what to do. So they left. I want you to take out the pieces of paper that you were given. And I want you to write down on this piece of paper either a picture a word, something that you've done that you're not proud of, a sin that you have done. So take a minute and write on your piece of paper. When you're done, set it to the side. After Jesus' disciples had left, I was crying. I couldn't believe that someone would take Jesus' body away from us. They'd already crucified him. I turned to leave, but then somebody called my name. Somebody said, Mary. And I knew immediately who it was. It was Jesus, and he was alive. He had died on the cross, but today he had been risen. His father, God, had saved him and taken him from the grave. 
He did this so we could be with God. That Jesus' death gave us eternity and everlasting life. Now, I want you to take your pieces of paper and put them inside the cup. I'm going to give you a spoon. And at home, if you will, take your water. And pour it enough to cover your piece of paper in your cup. And I want you to stir it around. At this time, I would like you all, if you hadn't had a chance to write on your piece of paper, go ahead and write on your piece of paper. Ours were sitting at home. Please take this time to go get a cup and some water. And I want the ones at home to follow along with the video as far as putting your piece of paper in your cup until and filling it with water until it covers the paper and stirring it around. Once you are ready, there are four different tubs that you can visit. Um, please pick a tub. Please keep in mind social distancing as well. Um, so make sure the person ahead of you is finished before you walk up. Chris and I are here to help if you have any questions with how to process it. So when you are ready, please come to the tubs.
to let the video finish. What happened to the water? The paper disappeared. There's no more paper. And just like that paper in our cups, our sins disappeared with the blood of Jesus on the cross. He died so that we could be forever with God. All we have to do is accept the gift that God has given us. So this Easter Sunday, as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus, remember to accept the gift we've been given. Let's pray. Creator God, thank you so much for giving us your son. Help us to remember to reach out our arms and take and accept your gifts. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Today we've been given the gift of God's son. We've been Welcome to the city gates of Jerusalem. Make y'all watch it all over again. No, um, we've been given the gift of God's son. He's died, shed his blood for us so that we can spend eternity with our God. So we are not separated from God. And just like you saw in the tubs, the paper dissolved, just like our sins went away and were washed away with Jesus' blood. So as Jonathan plays, please um, take a moment and feel that in your heart. Let it sit and experience what God truly did for us. Let's pray. Creator God, we cannot thank you enough for the gift you've given us this Easter Sunday. Help us to remember that it's not about eggs or bunnies or anything like that, but it is truly about your son and the gift you've given us through his blood. Help us to walk the path that you've chosen for us. Guide us and let us live worthy of the sacrifice that you've given us. It's in your name we pray. Amen. The good news that the just and gracious creator of the universe has looked upon hopelessly sinful men and women and has sent his son, Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, to bear his wrath against sin on the cross and to show his power over sin in the resurrection so that everyone who turns from their sin and themselves and trust in Jesus as Savior and Lord will be reconciled with God forever. Amen. Go in peace.